Hello everyone, I'm very happy to meet you here a uh, blessed name uh, in your novel uh, after the fire a still small voice. Oh, well I'm very honoured. Um, before I wrote the book I'd, I'd actually been to, to Vietnam I came when I was 18 oh. um, but of course it's nothing like what I wrote about um, so it's yeah it's lovely to be here. Yeah. Very hot though. Yeah. <laughs> to public uh, every 10 years a list of the uh, 20 best young British novelists. Many uh, novelists in the list uh, won the uh, Man Booker Prize. Could you foretell something about Man Booker for yourself? <laughs> that would be lovely, but we'll see, we'll see. I think the main um, thing about being on the list is um, these are writers from the past years that I, I grew up reading and and that I wrote my first novel reading and, and it's amazing to be kind of put among them. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. At the novel After the Fire, a still small voice mentioned to her the sorrow and um, obsession of many generations in a family. Mm. Well, they're um, very, very loosely based on my Australian family. Um, mm -hmm. Three generations, my grandfather, my uncle and my cousin. My grandfather's now dead, but my uncle and cousin still live on the sugarcane farm that um, appears on the front of the book. Um, and they're very macho. Um, they, they ride tractors in just, you know, their underwear and hat and they're always barefoot and they go hunting. And, but they, I also know them as being very soft, kind people. Um, who have to put on this sort of cloak of masculinity because of where they were born and mm -hmm. how they were born. My uncle was drafted to fight in Vietnam and um, I know that he has a lot of problems because of the memories and, and the things he did out there. Um, this is something that he sort of passed on to his son and my grandfather before him um, fought in Korea. And so that there's sort of all this strange sadness passed down through generations sort of dripping down. Now the your second novel, oh, the was singing, mm -hmm. uh, forthcoming in June in the UK mm -hmm. and next year in the US. Mm -hmm. And could you tell me something more about this novel? Sure. It's about guilt and um, how you forgive yourself something. If there's no one to forgive you, the West, um, a lot of people who have murdered and go to jail then become born again Christians. And so in a way they are, they wash their hands of what's happened. You are running um, a small independent uh, bookshop in Beckham. Yes. <laughs> I always think that a uh, bookstore is a uh, maybe wonderful atmosphere and environment for writer like a library. Would you like to share a bit about your mm. second book? Sure. Um, so the bookshop is a very small, very quiet place. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote. I've worked there for about six years part time, but I took it over completely in October uh, last year and. It's so small that I can write most of the year behind the counter, which fits in really well. People in the community want us to be there because it makes the, the area much nicer. Mm -hmm. um, 
cafes spring up around it and clothes shops and it, it kind of means there's more to do in the area because it was a very residential area before. We're really supported by our local community um, and especially around Christmas time um, when people and occasions that people need to buy presents. We really work well as a, a gift shop for good literature. In England, um, first of all, we have, uh, before you get to the publishing house, you have a literary agent who negotiates with the publishing house um, and you give 15% to them of, oh. of whatever you get. You also get an advance if you write a novel. You'll write the whole thing and the um, literary agent will help you get it to a good stage um, and then the publisher will buy it uh, for an advance and then by the amount of books you sell, that comes off your advance. So you have to earn out your advance before you get what we call royalties, which would be 10%, like you said. Publisher uh, will bring you some advance money for uh, writing uh, for the future book. What happens if you cannot uh, continue to, yeah. to write more? Yeah, um, that happens quite a lot, especially with non-fiction. Um, they don't expect you to pay the money back and normally, you know, we're not talking a huge amount. It's not like, for instance, uh, J.K. Rowling, it's not millions, it's, it's sort of low thousands, um, which is a lot of money and enough to live on for, for the year that you might first be writing. Not be punished uh, by breaking the contract? No, it's very, it's very English. It's, um, it's a sort of, it's understood that it's a creative process and sometimes you just can't deliver. Um, so it's, yeah, you don't have to, nothing happens to you, it's fine. Maybe a sensitive question, uh, I don't know if the uh, British writer can live on uh, their income of writing book? <laughs> um, I've been very lucky, just about could, I think. Uh, publishing in the UK is on a, a steep downward slope at the minute because of Amazon and ebooks. Because Amazon, even with their, yeah. they, they discount so heavily that um, you know the the royalty that publishers get is so small. So not many people can. You know, J.K. Rowling can do what she likes, um, mm -hmm. but that's the exception really. Um, I I could live off it and um, be very very frugal. In the morning. In the I work, morning. Yeah. I work best if I wake up and I don't speak to anyone or, um, or listen to the radio or anything. I just go straight to my desk uh, and probably do about four hours four? Um, before work. Yeah. And Every then, day? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think so, but no. What uh, make you feel the most difficult uh, in writing? It's maintaining interest in something over three or four years. It takes a lot of ambition, I suppose, and a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And there's, there are always points um, where you feel like what you're doing is ridiculous, because it is a ridiculous mm -hmm. occupation, making up stories. You have a deadline and other things are happening in your life that need attention, that's very hard because you have to be quite selfish to to finish a book, I think, um, which luckily I am. <laughs> when did you uh, start to writing? When I was about 16, 17, I wanted to be a painter, but was not very good. But I enjoyed the feeling I got out of making something. Um, and then when I was 16, I, I wrote um, my first short story, which was terrible as well. Um, but I got the same satisfaction. And in the UK, you can do a degree in creative writing. Um, 
So I did one of those and that sort of seemed to help cement that this was what I wanted to, to do. And you you, you learn uh, creative writing um, in school mm -hmm. and uh, in Vietnam there are some uh, like that but uh, I see that they are not successful uh, mm -hmm. with their students in your school so how your teacher teach you? It's not really a case of doing the, um, the course and then becoming a writer because of it I think you know between the course that I did there was maybe 10 and, and getting published in maybe 10 years where I worked in other jobs, did other things, wasn't thinking of myself as a writer, but maintained writing short stories. And I think the love for doing it has to be there. Um, I think the way that it's taught in the UK is that it's not taught. It's just, um, they don't tell you, this is how you write a sentence they get you to read other people's work. So you workshop um, once a week, mm -hmm. you all bring in your work and you read it out loud and people tell you what they think of it and what can be improved, what's not working. Um, and then the tutors are all published writers, quite famous published writers in some cases. They give you, they just give you their time and they talk to you and they maybe sometimes suggest a way of making it flow a bit better. It's but it's very much driven by yourself, and then it's it's an extensive reading list. So you read all sorts of things that you would never have read be like on your own. Um, stuff that you didn't realise was interesting, which is good. Um, quite a lot of literary criticism. All in all, it's it's just about giving yourself the time and taking it seriously for a year. It makes you feel like you know. I have to do this, which is good. Meeting the readers directly is a way to hear their idea and uh, know about their taste and uh, how often do the writers in written uh, attend the uh, event to meet the mm. readers? All the time, constantly. I mean, there's a huge literary um, event culture in in London. You can go to a literary event every night of the week in London um, and you get big writers going to the bars and, and just reading their work and doing Q&A. Um, and I think that's really important to have a, a fun atmosphere where you can have a drink and you can listen to some work and then you can meet people, you get a lot of agents and publishers going on to support. It can make you feel both as a writer and um, a published writer and an unpublished writer, it can make you feel that there's hope and that it, you know, it's getting to people and that you're able to touch that world. How many um times a year do you usually meet your uh, readers in all the events? Oh, uh, at the minute about once a week. Not once a week. <laughs> but, um, but it depends uh, in the sort of life cycle of the novel uh, around publication. Um, it's all the time and also because they know where to find me in the bookshop, they come in and talk to me um, mm -hmm. and sometimes, uh -huh. sometimes give me their manuscripts to read, which is a long, a long journey. Your second novel is coming and about the third novel. The third novel, <laughs> yeah. You, you are writing? I am, yeah. 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 Um, the first novel was set in Australia and a little bit in Vietnam. The second novel, half in Australia, half in England. And the third one will all be in England. Um, and it is based on um, my English grandparents who had a very strange relationship when I knew them. Um, my grandmother was an alcoholic and my grandfather um, had Parkinson's disease um, so it was very very quiet and shaky and and that's all I knew of them and I um, came across this photo album um, once they died of their honeymoon and they were so young and beautiful and sort of sexy and interesting mm -hmm. that I couldn't I couldn't kind of marry the two of them I couldn't work out how they got from that to that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really a, an imagined memoir, you know, based on a few facts that I know happened 
um, but I've written four pages <laughs> so it's oh, early days yeah. yeah thank you for your talk thank and you. uh, I hope you will have, have full of energy for the new book thank, thank you, you.